Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of Trident Talks. I'm Danielle, Senior Delivery Consultant here at Trident Search. Uh, today I'm joined by Toby Butler, the CRO of Cyber Vigilance. Hi Toby, how are you? Hi, yeah, very good, thanks. You so? Yeah. yeah, all good, thank you. Um, so Toby, as you know, I'm doing a, a series this month uh, for one of our Trident Talks series, uh, so talking to candidates who have transitioned from a large corporate organization working for a startup. Um, so for those who don't know, tell us about you. Uh, so yes, I have worked in both small and large organizations. Yeah. Uh, I've done a double stint actually at the same one large organization um, and currently chief revenue officer for Cyber Vision. So uh, manage everything from customer success to pipeline um, and the whole sort of vendor bit some of the stack and a whole lot of other things in between, which I guess where some of the line of questing might get to in terms of roles and responsibilities uh, and what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a managed security provider. Uh, we are a fairly embryonic in terms of organization been going since 2018, but actually really only kind of properly trading for about the last 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. uh, and this year is really the first year where we're actually growing out the pipeline um, and we're looking to uh, grow our sales team take on marketing people and so on and so forth so yeah nice. that's what we do cool and how many of you in the business at the moment uh six of us today yeah so that's three technical uh two of whom long-term contract into a uh, large bank large uk bank uh there are three of us i guess it's actually essentially in sales mm -hmm. um and that's the kind of that's the dna at the moment so as you can imagine there's a lot of kind of role responsibility sharing into other areas of the business like HR and stuff like that and finance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. So yeah, just going from your like previous companies and stuff you've worked for before. Um, so I know you worked at Dimension Data for quite some time and obviously it's now MTT. Um, so talk us about like, see the companies you worked for before and like your transition to smaller company. <clears throat> yep. Uh, so uh, a number of years back, I won't go right the way back because I am quite old. So <laughs> my, my job uh, does history does go back a long way. Um, if we go back to, I guess probably twenty about two thousand. So I worked for a company called Strawby Global, and mm -hmm. Strawby was a small company. There was only probably about five or six of us there at the time, mm -hmm. and we grew, grew quite quickly. I mean, it was traditional kind of resale, lots of infrastructure. Um, you know, some security in there and a few other bits and pieces, but real traditional kind of um, partner. Mm -hmm. um, we grew, I think at our height, we had 26. So it was kind of very much part of that journey of seeing how a company goes from, you know, how you all muck in and, you know, I'd be doing delivery dispatch on some days. I'd be mm -hmm. managing customers and talking to vendors and doing pricing, do everything pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. You pretty much run your own business within the business. Um, and then gradually as we grew, we had somebody in marketing and then we had somebody, people in finance and accounts and all the rest of it. So you pull back, pull away from some of those responsibilities and then focus more on the customer piece. Um, always enjoyed it. Love getting kind of uh, getting hands dirty and seeing how other areas of the business work. Um, it's good to see how what that operational function needs to look like at the back end. And therefore, you get to see what everybody in the business needs to have in terms of bringing in new resources um, so that's good. I guess when you go to when you work at one of the one of the big organisations, um, you can take that kind of operational knowledge, mm -hmm. especially in a sales where you can take that operational background knowledge and, in, and apply it into a big organisation. Um, but you're very much uh, not welcome when it comes to sort of dipping your toe into something in the finance world or whatever. There are people for that. So it's hard kind of relinquishing some of those roles and responsibilities in some respects. But also it's good to be able to understand what their role involves and what and how they help you in your in your role to be successful so um yeah those are the kind of the key two differences i would think between the two um mm -hmm. very very different places to be um I'm not quite sure how it would be if you started in one of those kind of big organizations and um that's kind of what you met with but you know people people thrive um mm -hmm. but just zero in on what they're there to do you know absolutely focus on what they're there to do yeah the rest of the stuff to others Possibly sometimes maybe a bit detrimental if you know too much about how the business can work at the back end. You might get involved in things that you shouldn't be. Mm. But, uh, yep. Cool. So obviously you now at Cyber Vigilance. Um, what would what excited you the most um, to join them? <clears throat> I think so. I've always quite liked. I think if personal choice between 
big org and small org. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I prefer something more this size. I mean, this was sort of fairly embryonic, actually, in terms of where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think getting back into, you know, really rolling your sleeves up and, and, and affecting all these different areas of the business. You know, one of the first things we did earlier this year was had to look at the HR system. You know, suddenly we're going to employ people. You mm -hmm. need contracts, you need legal documents, you need all of these things, timekeeping, the holiday uh, management. <clears throat> so, you know, looking at those things. So whilst it's, it's a lot of functional stuff at the back end, but again, being a part of that kind of journey of, of implementing it, you kind of know everything about it. So when you take people on, you should be able to, in theory, uh, just be able to onboard them very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I like the uh, fact that we kind of, we all know what's going on. You know, there's at any one time we all know what's going on pretty much with all the deals that we're working on, customers, um, and we all have a kind of a hand in on what's going on with those customers as well. And a big organization, more often than not, you, you could spend hours and hours on Teams calls, bringing people up to speed or, you know, or you know, um, just just getting everyone around the table. Whereas here we have a regular uh, catch up uh, two or mm -hmm. three times a week. So, yeah, it's smaller, it's tight fit. We all know what's going on. Uh, mm -hmm. And it allows us to focus, allows us to be agile. We can respond quickly. As an example today, you know, the, the Forex rates are, have gone a bit haywire on the last uh, week, given the government changes and announcements and everything else. So actually, you know, the Forex rate hit us hard. Most of what we do is we buy in GBP. But mm -hmm. ultimately, the back end, all of, the, all of the pricing that comes into us is usually sort of back ended in US dollars. So exchange rates change. Suddenly now we've got a go back out. So we're already on that first thing this morning. We've got a plan. Mm. We're back out to customers to try and get stuff boxed off as quickly as possible before their quotes are likely to change. So yeah. good. Hands on everything. Good yeah. To see everything going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is good. And it's you know, it is exciting being, as you say, like part of like the whole journey and knowing, you know, everything, what's going on. Um yeah. Well it's the same as us really, very similar. Uh yep. it's fifteen of us I think, now. Uh, so I think yeah. speed yeah, I know you guys are going really quickly. Are, I think yeah. I think speed of change and agility. I think those are the yeah. key things that I like. Everyone's got an eye on everything, and you can just move on a dime pretty much. Whereas mm. big organisations, you know, if you suddenly need to quote or requote twenty different customers, that's quite an arduous task in most most cases. And though usually you'll be in a queue because there'll be forty other salespeople wanting to do the same thing. Whereas mm. here we can just go bang done. We're on it. Yeah. So, yeah. So when you joined, did you have any um, sort of misconceptions before you joined? Uh, no, I don't think so, because I I guess because I've been somewhere similarly sized. I guess Strawberry was about the size we are now when I joined mm. there. Uh, so no, I kind of I think I was probably, I knew what to expect. Um, mm. So exciting, uh, just because it's suddenly having to re-familiarise yourself with a lot of that back-end yeah. process that in a big organisation typically you don't get to. Uh, look into all of those different functions within the business so uh, I, was, I was kind of all right with that I think I'm fortunate that I've done both yeah I did actually do a little bit of research so I know uh, Shawbury was about 50 people um, and then you've got Ultimate Business Solutions which was like 500 people went through like two acquisitions um, mm. were you there when they were acquired or were you not there um, no it was still privately owned uh, Ultimate was still privately owned when I was there, um, oh, okay. and actually, when I was there, it was probably actually about 240 people. Oh right, yeah, okay. and that was and that was an interesting one actually because that sits definitely sits somewhere between kind of where we are here and mm. you know a big sort of NTT uh, like mm. business. Um, so in there, you did get to see, you know, there were people to do all of those different functions, but typically you did get involved in those things and some of the decision making or. You know, legal documentation or whatever it might be, you know, things mm -hmm. that ordinarily might sit with, not sit with a salesperson, um, but you did get involved in. Um, so again, that's quite good. And they were, they were very good at making sure kind of, you know, people had a bit of a, a visual on it. So mm -hmm. that's a good size organization to be in actually. Yeah. Good. It's a good company as well. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you give someone, um, you know, someone that, for example, was working for NTT, um, what advice would you give them if they were sort of thinking about, joining a scale up startup? Um, I would say, don't be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. um, you are much more visible in a smaller organization. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think one of the things I would say in a, in a large, very large org is that there are some that kind of quite like to hide behind uh, Teams calls, no camera on. Yeah. Uh, 
a lot of people have said that actually in these series a lot of people have said exactly the same thing and I completely agree it's in the company I worked for before you could because we were like 300 people you could sort of get away with looking busy um and yeah like you say like hiding but here it's uh you can't do that you're you're, uh, you're very much on display yeah, exactly and that's one of the reasons why I left because I wanted more for myself you know I was 10 30 in May and I was like I need to buck my ideas up a little bit and actually get a career um because I was just sitting there and sort of prodding along not really doing much so it's definitely uh it's an eye-opener but it's much I've learned a lot more here absolutely yeah I would say absolutely I would say that there are uh, it certainly breeds um not in everybody, um, but it can breed a sort of culture of, of you know, nine to five thirty crew, you know, no, I'm having lunch, don't interrupt me, put it in my diary, you know, it, it just seemed to be a sort of a lack. I mean, I guess in, in certainly in my last couple of years as well, it probably didn't help with kind of the lockdown situation and pretty much everybody moved from just, you know, back in the day, you used to pick your phone up and ring people and go, oh, hi, it's me, you know, can we chat about some stuff and people would take your call. Mm. Um now it's somewhat it, well certainly within the last two years it was very different you'd have the booking time with everybody and it's like i just want an answer to a question i've got a quick thing you know people were it does breed a bit of a culture where you can hide away um because you're busy um mm. and you might not be you might be sitting in your hot tub drinking pims um <laughs> and kind of nobody knows yeah i think the, the, the one thing i would say that sort of can breed a bit of a sort of a weird culture in some respects for some people um and then it's it's and a lot of other people kind of get sucked into it. It's almost like being sucked into a big channel and you all kind of go, have to go in the same direction. You all have to go at the speed that every bit of the business goes in, um, which if you're somebody who's sort of quite creative or quite proactive or whatever, mm. it can be a bit challenging. You feel like you're throttled back or but that's, that's just big business. Big business equals lots of process. Um, you know, when in a smaller business, you tend not to get that. And as I say, in here, you kind of can't really hide you know mm. you've got to be on stuff on people on things but then you know we're running a business here we need to know what's going on mm. um and the decisions we make onward are based on what we're doing today um and the long-range goals of, of what we're doing as well so yeah you're definitely you're definitely on display in a small organization yeah, yeah. but you shouldn't be ashamed you shouldn't be afraid of that no. um actually you know i think having one thing i've seen is coming from a small organization into somewhere like ultima and and, and that was probably the only time i've ever really felt uh am i institutionalized in this small organization you know i'm going to join this massive sales beast and everyone's just going to completely annihilate me or anybody else um i was actually quite surprised because what actually what i brought along was a lot of skills that those guys didn't have <clears throat> and that was coming from an organization where you get to see the back in process yeah. you know i was involved in ordering uh dispatch uh delivery companies you name it i mean i got involved in everything so when you actually bring that into somewhere, um, so that's going from small to sort of something bigger. I think going from something bigger to smaller, um, just I think if you are kind of comfortable with being able to stick your hand up and say what you think, because that's what people expect, um, can't hide away. No, definitely. Cool. And last question, so I'm asking everyone this at the end of uh, the ser- or what, end of the episode is, if you could retire tomorrow, what would you do? <laughs> Uh, it's a very, very good question and also a tough question. Oh, if, <clears throat> if I could retire tomorrow, I guess it depends on how much money I had to retire with. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Probably might take up golf. Uh, I would probably move. I'd probably move to somewhere near the coast, maybe. Yeah. Um, Any travelling in your cars? I think if I, if I retired with a significant sum of money, <laughs> then I'd probably Yeah, if money was no more. object. Let's say it would definitely well for me. It would definitely involve probably a few more cars to tinker with and occupy my time. But uh, in all seriousness, though, if I was retiring with some of money in my pocket, I probably wouldn't want to do just things like that. Um, Mm -hmm. I actually think I would probably go into some kind of voluntary role, um, put something back into the local community, yeah, something like that. Um, You know, there's no point to. There's no point just sitting away and sort of just you know, pleasing yourself day in, day out with money yeah. on the bank. You know, it'd be nice to actually go and put something back in for other people. Nice. 
good I agree it's on my first one actually someone asked me and I was like oh god I didn't know someone was going to ask me it back but and I said I'd go uh traveling in a camper van but I would do a bit of charity work like you say put something back in um mm. obviously we're working we're working sales yeah. get paid good money um so yeah I think definitely yeah. putting, putting something back in so yeah I agree it's a good one yeah I think if I, I think if I could I'd, I'd probably you know one thing that's uh, one thing you definitely see in this industry as well, and we, we've taken on a, um, a technical uh, grad on a through the government sort of training scheme. And you know, when you hear from kind of hit, you know that up and coming generation of you know really struggling to get into the industry, and you mm-hmm. know here we are in this industry going, you know, there's loads of jobs, there's there's lots of vacancies. Um, you hear from actual candidates saying, oh yeah, no, me and my mates, you know there was four of us, and you know, I was really lucky because I got a role. I'm thinking. Why are we all making this difficult for them? And mm. this, these guys have got to be the next thing. Um, I think probably getting involved in something like that as well, in some kind of advisory to to help. I think there's possibly a bit of disconnect in some respects to some of those. Um, uh, I guess for the, for one of a better description, kind of recruiting um, certainly grad stuff into mm. actual business. Um, I think some businesses are a little bit harsh on people. I think possibly yeah. us slightly older more experienced folk forget what it's like to start i mean i remember mm. um in fact on saturday i was at a, a reunion the company i worked on when i started in it i was at a reunion on saturday night with about 15 or 20 people from 1996 and <laughs> you know we were recalling that i remember my first day on that job so it was for a big it distributor and just starting and they went right there's your desk there's your phone it's got four lines coming in mm. and there was no training no one taught you sales training no one taught you how to deal with people um, no one told you what you were selling. I had thrown no in the idea. deep end. <laughs> Literally no idea. And I remember I, my desk had catalogues all across it and then a phone and then a, and then a day book that I'd write notes oh, in. Yeah. And just, the, you know, you'd have four lines coming in permanently. Customers going, I need this, I need this. And you just had to, you just had to pick it up. You just got, to, you know, no one told you. Mm. Um, and I think often actually, you know, perhaps maybe that fits my, um, maybe that fits the way I kind of operate. I like probably... <laughs> probably um flying by the seat of my pants in some respects <laughs> and that's kind of how i've always kind of got by um i'm not particularly academic so i don't really kind of do i'll read a book and then i'll know about it i look mm. i learn by seeing doing and doing it. so yeah, actually being thrown in the deep end for me really worked but mm-hmm. but we started i was given a i was given a, a you know someone gave me a chance and i knew literally nothing and and here we are today so yeah. i think sometimes i think we expect maybe a bit too much from some people coming in mm. and i'd like to see that transition for people wanting to get into the industry just made a bit easier and also when you start you don't really know what you want to do no so that's it yeah i agree some, that's something cool. advisory there mm. good oh well thank you for joining i really appreciate your time this morning and um yeah look forward to being out live um so yeah thank you toby <laughs> nice one cheers been great